When rare Yostrich awoke from a long nap on Mythical Island, it felt happy and well-rested. However, its hair was an unruly mess. And like the wild thumpies, it needed to be tamed. So it quickly stuck its head in the ground to style it just right. But when rare Yostrich tried to pull its head from the dirt, it found it to be stuck. Luckily, Anglo, Gajub, <laughs> and Cherubble heard the commotion and rushed to investigate. And soon they found rare Yostrich helplessly stuck in Mythical Island's cool soil. Without hesitation, Anglo stepped up and readied itself and grabbed rare Yostrich's taloned feet and pulled hard, heaving back with all its might. It seemed, however, Anglo wasn't strong enough. Gajub tried next with an interesting idea. Instead of pulling, it inhaled a deep breath and blew a mighty bluster of wind from its tusks. But it was no use. Rare Yostrich did not budge. Worried for rare Yostrich, Cherubble couldn't think of how to break it free. Maybe some rest will bring forth an idea or two in its dreams. So Cherubble laid on the ground and swiftly fell asleep. Nyehehe knew it was rare Yostrich's last hope. Looking mischievous and excited, Nyehehe had an idea. Instead of pulling or pushing rare Yostrich from the ground, it tickled its feet. Rare Yostrich giggled and wiggled and loosened the dirt around its head, finally breaking free thanks to all its friends, even Cherubble. Nobody likes feeling left out, especially a monster. And that's what today's story is about. I'm Monster Handler Charlie, and this is Monster Mythos. A monstrous party was in full swing over on Light Island. The monsters were enjoying the fantastical games and festivities in celebration of sky painting. That is, all but one. It was Blout who was all alone. Blout was sad it didn't get an invitation to the big party. It's okay, Blout thought. I can make my own party with my own games and festivities. Using a ball and a stretch skin decoration, Blout bounced and threw the ball here and there, catching it each time while keeping score. Sure, this game was fun, but as Blout looked over at the party, it longed to be with the rest of the monsters, singing and dancing. In frustration, Blout threw the ball hard against the stretch skin, launching it fast overhead and towards the party. As the ball bounced amongst the monsters, Whizbang noticed that Blout was all alone. The monsters asked why Blout wasn't at the party. Because I wasn't invited, Blout told them. Suddenly, a letter flew down from the sky and landed on the ground. It was a party invitation for Blout. The monster's invitation was lost, but now found. The monsters were more than happy to have Blout join the party, but it turned out that an invitation was never needed. Everyone is always included and welcome to all monster parties, no matter what. The monsters cheered and were overjoyed that Blout was finally at the party, where it showed everyone its new game that they all enjoyed. Have you ever slept in or hit the snooze too many times and then remembered you had to be somewhere? Well, that's what happened to DJ Epic, and this is Monster Mythos. The sun was shining, the music was bumping, and Summer Song was in full swing. Despite DJ Epic not making its iconic appearance, the monsters did their best to keep Summer Song going strong. However, this didn't answer the question. Where was DJ Epic? Well, across the living ocean, a top seasonal shanty laying on a beach chair was none other than DJ Epic enjoying a lazy summer evening and watching the sunset beyond the water. It didn't have a care in the world. Huh? What? DJ Epic thought. That music sounds like Club Ox. Oh no, Club Ox! Why didn't Bill contact me? In a panic, DJ Epic knew it had to get to Club Ox, pronto. Luckily, the skyship was parked on top of Seasonal Shanty, allowing DJ Epic to hop aboard and take flight with maximum speed over the living ocean because the Summer Song celebration was coming to an end. DJ Epic flew swiftly and quickly through the clouds, so fast, in fact, that the skyship lost control and was barreling down towards Earth Island. But just in the nick of time, DJ Epic gained control and landed safely on the ground. Thankfully, Bookworm was close by and took hold of the skyship, allowing DJ Epic to take center stage, where it thanked all the monsters for keeping the party going. Everyone cheered now that DJ Epic was finally at the helm. Club Ox took to the skies, and the celebration for Summer Song was brought to an end with a truly epic finale. Something mysterious is happening over on Earth Island. Can you help solve the puzzle? 
I'm Monster Handler Charlie, and this is Monster Mythos. Just keep your feet on the ground. A mystery is afoot over on Earth Island, and Detective Talker is on the case. It seems someone has been stealing Pango's treats. Pango revealed to Talker that it has been baking donuts, pizza, and cake in its large bakery, and they've been going missing. Pango also mentioned that some of these treats are Cybop, Drumpler, and Tweedle's favorite treats. Could one of them be the culprit? Detective Talker knew that it was up to them to carefully interview each monster. Talker started with Drumpler, who mentioned that it loves a well-baked pizza, but hasn't had time to eat any treats as it has been difficult to find time practicing their music because of all the earthquakes lately. Next, Talker interviewed Tweedle, who admitted that donuts are in fact its favorite food, but couldn't have stolen any of Pango's treats. You see, Tweedle has been helping Clamble collect its cast-off metal plates that have rolled away during the Earth Island rumblings. Finally, it was time to interview Cybop, who said that cake is its most favorite food. However, Cybop insisted it couldn't have stolen any of the treats as it was flying around the island looking for the source of the recent rumblings that have occurred. Talker considered the evidence but still couldn't figure out who was stealing the treats. As it was pondering, the ground suddenly started shaking. That's when Talker found the answer. A recently baked cupcake rumbled and fell into the bottomless pit situated next to the bakery. The recent quakes are the culprit, of course. With quick thinking, Cybop and Tweedle grabbed a bag and swooped into the bottomless pit, scooping all the treats out of the air and dropping them safely onto Drumpler's drum. Pango thanked Detective Talker for solving the case and thanked Cybop, Tweedle, and Drumpler for all their help, rewarding them with their favorite treats that they helped save. Have you ever been left to clean up after a big party? Well, I'm Monster Handler Charlie, and this is Monster Mythos. It was a successful year celebrating all of the new seasonal events in the monster world. After great events like the Beat Hereafter, Clover Spell, and Sky Painting, to name a few, the monsters were ready to kick back and relax. That is to say, almost all of the monsters. Once again, Jamboree was left all alone on Seasonal Shanty to clean up the mess left behind by the seasonal monsters. The island was in quite a state of disarray, and someone had to clean it for anniversary month. Looks like it will just be me, once again, Jamboree thought. Jamboree swept and scrubbed and tidied up as best it could, but progress was slow and tiring. Looking at the mess all around the island, Jamboree felt abandoned and alone. It gazed up to the sky and wished that its friends were there to help. Suddenly, Jamboree heard a clang, then a bang, and twangy sounds of clamor. It grew afraid and wished even more that its seasonal friends were there to comfort it. Then, all at once, out from the mess, all of the seasonal monsters appeared with bags, brooms, and cleaning supplies. The cavalry had arrived. The seasonal monsters hadn't left Jamboree alone after all. They just went to round up more supplies to get the job done quicker. All of the monsters joined in and cleaned while singing the seasonal shanty tune the whole time. Once seasonal shanty was restored to all its spotless glory, everyone cheered for Jamboree. Jamboree was so grateful it began to meditate and transcended to a higher plane where it joined in with the Gold Island song. It's a spooktical, it's the spook, it's the spooktical season and something haunting is happening over at the spooktical spectacle. I'm Monster Handler Charlie and this is Monster Mythos. The smunkle lanterns are lit, leaves have fallen from the trees, and shadows are growing. The season has truly become cold and haunting. But don't be discouraged, for Spooktacle is here, and monsters from all around the monster world are gathering to show off their best costumes in the spectacular spectacle. But Sponge noticed some strangeness. It saw something quickly on the corner of its eye, and a chilling song drifted on the wind. An eerie presence, perhaps? Something maybe from beyond? Sponge donned its best costume and decided to investigate. Sponge entered a small forest away from the costume contest rabble. There was a faint glow through the trees. Sponge heard quiet humming as it crept closer and closer to the mysterious green glow. 
Sponge emerged from the bushes, only to find Parlsona mixing a green cauldron. Parlsona was making green apple punch for Spooktacle. Or was it Spectacle? Or is it both? Or never mind. Suddenly, they both heard the strange song, hauntingly through the trees, and something lurked in the forest. Parlsona decided to help Sponge in the phantasmal quest. The two made their way to the rocky cliffs at the edge of the forest. When they noticed something was following them, it was approaching slowly, getting nearer and nearer. It was Mammoth, dressed in their signature stentorian skeleton costume. Mammoth said it had also heard strange noises and had seen shadows in the dark. So Mammoth joined the investigative crew. The three monsters continued through the cliffs where they found a cave and a chilling song omitted from within. Sponge, determined to see the end to the mystery, led the others into the cave. A red glow cast across the walls as the tunnel twisted and turned. The three entered into a large den where a haunting thing loomed over them. It was Furcorn all along, practicing their song for the talent show in the spectacle. Furcorn had been running around Plant Island, wearing its costume and trying to find a place with good acoustics and found it here in this cave. The ghostly mystery was over. Each of the monsters returned to the spooktacle spectacle where everyone showed off their ghoulish garbs. And Furcorn won the contest for its very spooktacular song. The crescendo moon is upon us, a time when all the monsters get to show their love and appreciation for one another by gifting each other red envelopes. But I hope nobody feels left out. I'm Monster Handler Charlie, and this is Monster Mythos. It is the new year, and time for the monsters to reflect on the past as well as look to the future. More than anyone, Caralong understands that this is the time to conjure its lunar dynamism and kick off the crescendo moon for all to enjoy. The monsters of Magical Sanctum did just that by showing their love and appreciation for one another by gifting each other red envelopes. Rorik, among them, was especially excited to gift a red envelope to their best friend, Floris. However, Rorik couldn't find them. Floris, on the other hand, watched as the monsters all around Magical Sanctum received red envelopes here and there. I hope I am lucky enough to be gifted a red envelope this year, Floris thought. Floris wandered Magical Sanctum, hoping someone would approach them, but no one did. If only Floris knew that Rorik was looking for them. Unable to find Floris, Rorik was becoming increasingly worried. Disappointed, Floris had wandered into the thick woods of alien trees to go to their favorite spot. I guess no one wanted to gift me a red envelope this year, they thought. If only Floris knew. Floris produced a song, and their melancholy emotions caused them to grow brighter. Rorik was just about to give up when they saw a shiny array of lights beyond the alien trees. They inspected the illumination and finally found Floris making beautiful music. There, Rorik gave Floris a red envelope and thanked them for their friendship. Floris and Rorik laughed at their coincidental game of cat and mouse and joined the other monsters for the Crescendo Moon celebration. It's the Echoes of Eco season, a time when all the monsters gather around to watch the great Critter Migration vacation, each monster picking out a perfect spot to watch the spectacle. But it's easier for some monsters than others. I'm Monster Handler Charlie, and this is Monster Mythos. During the Echoes of Eco season, the monsters of Amber Island feel that it is important to give back to nature, and cultivating trees and safekeeping critters' natural habitats is a great way to show thanks for the Amber Island Colossal, Dulcetea. It is during this time that each fire monster gets excited to witness and take part in the annual tradition of the Great Critter Migration Vacation. More than anyone, Stog is especially ecstatic to see the many flocks of flightful critters. However, in the past, Stog's view has always been obstructed and has never seen the Great Critter Migration. But this year, they are determined. First, Stog climbed a tree to get up high, but was blown away by a gust of wind. Next, Stog scaled up the side of an amber stone mountain, but lost their footing and slipped back to the bottom. Monsters had already begun gathering to see the fantastical flock of critters amassing on the horizon. 
Stog ran to the crowd, attempting to reach the front to find a good vantage point, but it was no use. The great critter migration vacation had started, and they couldn't see. The monsters oohed and awed as Stog tried desperately to see, but it was too late. The critters had come and gone. Upset, Stog walked away, when suddenly, something firmly grabbed Stog and hoisted them up into the sky. Glowl had noticed Stog couldn't see, so they gave Stog the best view possible. They swiftly flew alongside the school of critters, giving Stog the most incredible experience that they will never forget. 